Here we go, a spectacular surprise, and just what we set out to find this morning. A pair of utterly gorgeous cheetah. And at first I thought that we were here with the musketeers, but actually I think that this is Armani's daughters. As she got up, I realized that it looks like it's a female. So there we go, the two of them together. The first time I've seen these cheetah, and I'm so, so excited. What I'm going to do quickly while I'm here, I know where I am, but just in case when it gets dark, I'm just going to GPS their point so that when night falls, we can find them once again. They so were right in the middle of a place called Double Crossing, where the sort of the two drainage lines split, and there's a little island in between them. And there's a crossing that runs through the two of the, the sort of the two twin streams, and hence the name Double Crossing. We've just made our way just through the first one. The, riv the rivers are really high at the moment. Hopefully we can get ourselves through the second as well. This is the wonderful thing about being in the Masai Mara. Although we did see cheetah occasionally in the Sabi sand, really we've been absolutely breathtakingly lucky with cheetah sightings in the Mara. And an opportunity to get to know them, I think, over the course of the next few months is what I'm looking forward to most. Tammy, interesting question while we watch these cheetah who perhaps are contemplating their breakfast and my stomach is rumbling. What sort of food do people eat on safari? Well, while we watch these lovely ladies, what sort of food do we eat? Um, well, typically, the food is exceptional. I mean, if, if you're a guest at a lodge, they will have prepared, if you're going out all day, they will prepare a lovely breakfast for you with eggs and bacon and whatever else you want to eat, depending upon your dietary requirements. Lunch will be a spectacular buffet of various cold pastas, meats, salads. Um, and then, of course, the evening dinners will be either the traditional ugali, so essentially perhaps a dish of goat and cabbage or if that perhaps doesn't suit your taste if you want to go more western then you can have I don't know whatever the chefs happen to prepare for you depending upon where you're staying so really the the amount of choice is vast as to what we eat well Manu and I've got some slightly soggy sandwiches and some coffee and some biscuits some dried fruits some nuts chips chocolate snacks all around and we will be going to Al Shaiki Lodge a little bit later to spend our afternoon there. Oh we've got so lucky they're walking right towards us. I thought they were going to go the other way. They really are such graceful creatures. Our Lara Moore, that is also a fascinating question about why it is that cheetah are spotted and yet lions are not. Why would that be since we know that the spots work for camouflage? I think really the, oh sweet, look at the two of them. Still fluffy, huh? Still just that little bit fluffy. Um, are Lara Moore? I think it's just because of the way that they hunt. So lions have that advantage of being social predators and the, I mean they're still camouflage and they're still ambush predators but they are social hunters whereas cheetah for the large part are solitary hunters. I know right now we're sitting with two of them but these ladies are young. They're still very very young and they will be moving off independently over the coming months. Hopefully we'll be able to keep track of them, but females do have a massive home range. So I think the fact basically that they are essentially solitary hunters like leopards, it means that there's less room for error. There's no, nobody's got your back, which means they've got to be able to creep up right up close. And everybody always talks about the fact that cheetah prefer to hunt in pure open spaces. But 
actually I've seen them really enjoy an area like this where there's enough vegetation to hide them as they sneak up on their prey. Joshy, absolutely you can tell the difference between individual cheetah. Um, do I know these cheetah well enough yet to do so? No, I do not. I can tell you it's a pair of females, and therefore most likely Armani's daughters. That it, It's statistically, it, it, in this area, double crossing, it couldn't really be any other cheetah. Um, each and every single cheetah's spots are completely unique. They're as unique as a fingerprint. And typically what researchers will do, organizations that monitor these cheetah, they will have pictures of mainly the sides of the cheetah. A side on shot is the best way to identify them. And they, they will look for what I used to do when I was busy identifying, when I used to work identifying various animals um, and cheetah as well. I used to look for distinctive marks and I still do that I still do that with leopards as well distinctive patterns in their spots you know joined up spots or something like that something that's unique to them and easily noticeable I don't know these two cats well enough I think if we spent each and every single day with them we'd know them as well as we used to be able to recognize Karula or recognize Shadow or Tandi or Tingana once you get to know them every animal has an individual look So yes, absolutely we can. Jared, I don't know. I'll, I'll ask the research team whether or not they'll collar them. We are in contact with them. We do chat to them every now and again. I'll find out from them whether they have any plans to collar them. I'm not sure what their protocol is on collaring cheetah and which cheetah they decide to collar. Um, whether it, Because most of the collared cheetahs that I know of um, have been males in this area. Obviously D'Artagnan being one of them, the male in the musketeer group. Mm, so I'm not sure. I'll try and find out for you whether that's on the cards. It might be that the massive movements of the females preclude them. No, it shouldn't stop them from getting a collar. I don't know. I'll find out for you. Interesting question. Obviously, collaring is something that's only done where it can be of benefit to the animal species as a whole. So, I mean, a collar is a slightly invasive thing. There's no getting around that. The animal has to be darted. It has to be anesthetized. The collar has to go on. And it is, it is a process that is done so that data can be collected, so that we can learn more about the cheetah, so that we can use that knowledge to advance our, our knowledge of species, the species as a whole and to conserve them. And that of course means that you've got to weigh up the balance of is it worth doing that for the animal, so for the good of the species. Rebecca, the lines on the cheetah's face, very distinctive. Of course there are many just so stories as to how the cheetah got the lines on its face. I remember when I was 10 years old, I had to write a story about why the cheetah had lines on its face. It was because the poachers stole her cubs, I think, was what my 10-year-old mind came up with. I was obviously deeply concerned, even then, the impact we were having on the world. <laughs> the reason that they actually have the tear marks down their face is because they're daytime. They're diurnal hunters, particularly during the morning and the afternoon. And yeah, I don't know if you've ever watched sports players, um, especially that play sort of in the middle of the day. They have those dark stripes under their eyes. They paint on dark colors. It's to reduce the glare. So it helps them to see in the bright midday sun. The opposite reason of why lions and leopards have a paler color underneath their eyes. We're going to sit tight for the rest of the safari, I imagine, with these lovely ladies. Let's send you back across to Taylor to find out, uh, not Taylor, sorry, Tristan, to find out what he has planned for his morning. Jamie, I can see how you can get confused. We are both have names that start with T, except, well, one is blonde and short and the other one is tall and dark haired. And of course the fact that one is a male and the other one is a female, but other than that, completely understandable to get the two of us mistakenly named, if that's what you want to call it. Um, now of course I'm just kidding, I'm sure Jamie is kidding as well and it's all just a bit of playfulness. Now. We've just driven up towards Trias Dam, nothing really happening. I didn't expect much at the dam itself. It's so cold this morning that there wouldn't be really many signs of any animals coming to drink. I was just checking around for some of the birds. There was the...